Well, it finally happened. Rise is finally on PC. Sure, it's old news by this point, and everyone's having a blast with their 60 FPS and their fancy schmancy 4K textures, and then there's me, with the PC like a potato, stuck with my Nintendo Switch. I'm not salty, but I still wanted to celebrate nonetheless. So I thought it'd be a good idea to do something a little crazy, at least for me. I decided to take on what would become my biggest, most ambitious, and most detailed and expensive project yet. That's right, I'm gonna tackle my very first flagship monster. That's a big deal. I mean, what better way to celebrate Rise on PC, as well as hold off my hype for Sunbreak, than to attempt sculpting a Magna Malo. I figured this would be a good challenge for me. I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but Magna Malo is probably the most over-designed monster in the entire franchise so far. So by that metric, if I can successfully sculpt the Magna Malo, then damn, I can pretty much sculpt anything this series has to throw at me. So with that said, let's get into this. Thankfully, this being a newer monster from a much more recent game, finding high quality resources was fairly simple, which made it very easy to draw out and craft my armature appropriately. So I do my usual thing. I start laying out my wire and connect it together to make a nice supportive skeleton. Once that's done, I start bulking out the form with some foil. Yeah, that looks about right. Now to fill it out. Good. For some added security for my elongated baked potato, I wrap it in extra wire and more foil. Seems good enough to me. It looks about right from the side view for sure, but the top needs some work. So I add some bulk to the shoulder and waist areas as well. And just like that, I have what looks like a silver plated shake weight. Fantastic. Now for the legs, I lay out more wire, making sure to mark off where the shoulder might be. Then I ensure I have a little extra to poke through the armature, essentially forming a joint. I do this on the front, and the back, and then on both sides. And to my shock, it pretty much stands on its own. I take that as a green light to move forward, and I cover it head to toe in Sculpey 3. Once baked, this should give me a very strong and sturdy base to walk off of. So off camera, I get it into its final pose and do just that. Speaking of off-camera, I also covered it in its first layer of Super Sculpey. It wasn't very exciting, you didn't miss much, so you're welcome. I swear it has nothing to do with thinking I hit play when I actually didn't, and doing a bunch of work that ended up not being recorded. Uh, no, not, not at all. No. And with that out of the way, I can get started on the underside plates. I think working from the bottom up is the way to go for a sculpt like this. You'll understand why later. After bulking it out a bit, I can get started roughing out where I want these plates to be using a scraper. Looks kind of gnarly, but once I get the plates on there, you won't even know they were there. Just gotta do some squeezing, some squishing, some cutting, and before you know it, not too shabby. Now the top half was a little bit fiddly and took some trial and error, so I'm just gonna cut to the finished product to save on hard drive space. Once that was done, I used the same method to add armor plating to the sides. Then I connect everything with a bit of loose skin that was then textured and scored up. Now, I'm not really sure what I was going for here, but upon seeing the final product, uh, I have no complaints. So far, the hardest part of this sculpt was figuring out a good way to do the chest. But after a while, I was able to get to a point where I was happy. 
Now I'm at a part that will make me sad. My first run-in with spikes. Now, if I had to sum up this sculpt in three simple words, it would be spikes for days. And trust me, this is only the beginning. I started by poking a bunch of holes and filling them with the tiniest amount of clay possible. It was a nightmare, and from this point forward, I had to be incredibly careful with how I handled the piece. That's what she said. <laughs> However, at the end of the day, and I'm not joking, I encountered a whopping zero breaks throughout this entire project. I don't know if that was talent or luck, but I'll take either at this point. Now I wanted to start detailing and get it ready for its first bake. However, I noticed something was off. The shingles on this side are facing the wrong direction. Great. Now I get to rip it off and do it all over again. Once it was done, though, the detailing could begin. Now, Magnamalo's armor plates are covered pretty much entirely in a wood grain-like texture. This was achieved simply by scoring the clay with my scraper tool. Very simple, yet effective, especially after it's painted. Now I take my shaper tool and add a whole bunch of nicks and scratches to the underside, making it seem like this guy's seen plenty of action. I mean, there should be plenty of wear and tear, right? In the end, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. And now at this point, I can move on to the first real bake. Okay, now that everything's locked in, I can move on to the appendages. I decided to start with the neck. I add a whole bunch of bacon bond and some fresh clay, smooth everything into place, and add a whole bunch of angry, muscly detail. Now for the front legs. Again, I add more bacon bond and clay, making sure to add more bulk than I think I actually need. That way I can shave off the excess and shape it as I see fit. I then add more clay to round out the muscles and the joints to make sure Magnamalo is as buff as possible. Oh, and don't forget to add even more spikes because of course he has spikes coming out of his elbows. Why not? It was at this point that I noticed there's armor plating covering up pretty much the entire front legs. So yeah, about that. Just a quick shave later and I can start working on those aforementioned plates. I basically just cut these shapes out of a sheet of clay, lay them down on top of one another and attach them. No biggie. Then I add Magnamalo's trademark bony vents, for lack of a better word. It's pretty much done the same way as before. And after poking a bunch of holes, this is the end result. Now I apply the wood grain texture to all the plates. And then I roll on some tiny scale textures with the side of a tool, making sure I hit as many exposed skin areas as I can. While I'm at it, I do the same thing with the neck, because why not? And then I repeat all the previous steps for the other front leg. And it looks a little something like this. Yeah. Pretty happy with that so far. Now I'm gonna move on to the back legs, which are handled much the same way as the front, only they're kinda simpler, which is great. They still get all the same kinds of details. The muscles, the spikes, the textures, and of course, more wood-like armor plates. The fourth leg gets a bit more attention since it's being flexed, so the muscles were more exaggerated because of that. I just repeat the same steps one more time and voila! All four legs are complete. Now, excuse me if I'm being a little too technical or scientific here, but I'm gonna work on Magnamalo's junk now. After a quick pass with my texture tool, the underside is basically complete. Just gotta add a couple more spikes before I forget. I can't believe I almost did. How could I? 
And now it's time to slip this bad boy into the oven and move on to the feet. Now the feet are just blobs of clay that form something of an oven mitt. Then I poke, prod, and shave this mitt down until it mostly resembles a Magnamalo foot. And then I add the claws, which, now that I think about it, are really just spikes that come out of your toes. <sighs> spikes will be the end of me, I swear. Anyway, they get some mini armor plating, along with some mini wood grain texture detail, and this is what I end up with. I do the same thing for the other side as well. It's starting to look really imposing already. And stable, too. Thankfully, the back feet are far more straightforward and required way less time and effort to put together. Before I knew it, all four legs are complete. All I gotta do now is add the little thumb, toe, claw things, and I can finally consider the underside completely finished. Now it just needs another bake, be right back. Now I'm gonna work on the head sculpt. I crumple up some foil, cover it in clay, add some underlying structure and hollow out the eye holes. Then I stab a hole from one side of the face to the other. Nah, you don't have to think about this for right now, just know that it's there. We'll get to it when the time is right, okay? Okay. Now I give it some eyeballs, and it's starting to look like some sort of deranged Muppet. Hello. Then I bake it, so I can start adding some further details, like this Groucho Marx mustache. Now, as details started getting smaller and more intricate, I found myself filming less and less. I tried to get as many progress milestones on film as I could though, like this. That's most of the top of the head and the teeth. And the bottom jaw with even more spikes. It's starting to resemble Magnamalo now, I think. There's just a few things missing. Hmm, what could it be? Were you gonna guess spikes? Cause the answer is spikes. Well, teeth, but you know what I mean. Now I just gotta make sure those holes we're not talking about yet have enough clearance after adding said teeth. Then I add the eyelids and other supplemental details. And I smooth everything in to make it seamless. Looking pretty good. I'm definitely happy with this. Then I just add some ears. And that's pretty much all she wrote when it comes to the head sculpt. I'm going to set it aside for now and get to work on the upper body. First up, the shoulder pads. Magnamala was built like a linebacker, so I need to use a lot of clay to fill in all those recessed areas, and before long, the once thin and scrawny sculpt is now starting to appear appropriately buff. Oh, and don't bother worrying about those markings there. Let's just file it under mistakes into miracles and move on, shall we? Now I just score the crap out of everything, and just like that, the shoulder pads are done. Easy. Now it's time to attach the head. Full disclosure here, I kinda screwed up and made the neck a bit too long. See, the head should be about here. Not the biggest deal, but I felt I had to do something about it. So, I enlisted the help of Mr. Dremel. I marked off where the decapitation was to take place and let Mr. Dremel do his thing. Now with that out of the way, I can attach the head to the body. I just need a whole lot of bacon bond and some extra clay to fill in the gaps and make it as seamless as possible. This was easier said than done, believe me. Now with the head firmly in place, I can bake it yet again and move on to the real fun part. The back. Where spikes go to die. I mark off where I want all the plates to be. Then I apply some bacon bond and some clay to add additional height to the back. It's not meant to be a straight line after all, and the plates I'm going to add need as much support as I can give them. I then begin the arduous task of creating each and every spike that runs up and down its body. This takes a while. I hope you'll excuse me if I didn't get much of this on film. Before I can continue though, 
I need more plates and some extra details. And as usual, I detail them with my scraper tool and I do this on both sides. Now to add the top plates. I follow the pencil marks I made before and lay down progressively bigger and smaller plates as needed until I reach the beginning of the tail. And now the fun begins. Luckily, I'm sparing you the details. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Just look at it. To call this section a pain would be a massive understatement. It took me all day. And the craziest part is, I'm not even done yet. There's more. Yep. Now, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy with it, but if I never see another spike again as long as I live, I'll be a happy camper. Now it's time to detail each and every last one of those plate spikes. Believe it or not, this was quick and easy and a good way to vent my frustration, let me tell you. With that finally behind me, it's time to start working on the tail. I figured the tail would be easier to work with if it was separate from the body, so I chopped it off and I started adding clay and detailing it as I went. There were more plates and extruding bone bits that needed adding, but at this point I felt like a pro, so it really wasn't a big deal, and went smoother than I expected. I'm also really happy with how the tip came out. Really? Nothing. Then I built up the muscly knuckle-like joint that connects it to the rest of the tail, which of course gets more spikes and further detailing. Then I add a few more plates, and the tail is off to the oven for probably the seventh time. No, I'm not joking. Now I drill into the model and begin the process of attaching the tail to the body using a metric ton of bacon bond and extra clay. I then filled in some blank spots with more plate detail before moving on to the back leg armor. These get attached, detailed, along with more spikes of course, and this is what I'm left with. There's just a few more things the sculpt needs. Let's start with the head spikes. I, I mean horns, or antlers? Either way, they start out simple enough with a basic armature. I make sure to keep trying them on as I go. Looks about right. They get more intricate as I go on, adding layer after layer, building up this crown of thorns until he looks like the most heavy metal deer you've ever seen. I add bony detail to the larger antlers as I go too, until eventually... Once I'm happy with where I'm at, I go in and add that same detail to the smaller antlers and finally attach them to the head once and for all. Appropriately, the final step for this sculpt is, drum roll please, more spikes! Magnamalo's arm blades were pretty simple to make, with some clay shingles and a simple armature. Once done, they get textured and scored and attached to the body, and that's really all there is to it. And with that, my Magnamalo is completely done. Now I couldn't be happier with how this ended up. It took a while, but it was so worth the effort. <laughs> it feels good to be done though, let me tell ya. So, Let's pop this bad boy in the oven one last time and get to painting. Much like before, I figured it was best to go from the bottom up, so I started painting the underside in progressively darker shades of red. Once I'm happy with where the red is at, I move on to the purple base coat. Again, I'm trying to get as dark as I can with this color.
Then I move on to the back plates with just a simple black coat. I make sure to cover everything from the head to the tip of the tail. Then I touch up the face, and all the horns, claws, and extruding bony bits get a nice dark coat of brown. And just like that, we are done with the full body base coat. I don't know about you, but I kind of like how this looks already. It looks like some kind of Magnamalo subspecies or something. I don't know, but I can't stop there. It's time to move on to dry brushing. Again, I'm starting from the bottom up, only this time with progressively lighter colors to bring out the highlights. All the bony bits get a layer of bone paint before being stained with some yellow ochre over top. I tried my best to match the look from the game, and I think I got pretty close. I like where it's at. Let's not forget, I have to do this to all the spikes on the back too. Can't forget about those, now can we? There's also some added detail that goes on along the way, and bam! Look at that! Now, I think these stand out a little too much, so I'm going to dull them down with a nice simple black wash. I'm not going to go crazy with it, it's just being done in the upper back portions and the tail because I kind of like the effect that it added. And we are done! My first flagship monster, fully sculpted, fully painted, fully complete. <laughs> This was one hell of a journey, let me tell you. I wasn't kidding earlier when I said this was an ambitious project. From the start, I always thought it would be cool to sculpt a Magnamalo, but if you told me I'd be doing it for my third sculpt and not like my 20th after I've had a ton of practice, I would have called you crazy. This is also by far my most expensive piece to date, using half a brick of Sculpey 3 and two and a half bricks of Super Sculpey. That means Magnamalo weighs in somewhere between three and four pounds when all said and done. That's a big boy! Oh, and while these shots are playing out, before I forget, remember those holes I put in the mouth? You know, the ones I told you not to think about? Well, there's one defining aspect of Magnamalo that I've yet to touch on. Hellfire. Yep. That's right, I decided to make my own custom, detachable Hellfire. Now, I could have made it out of clay, but I chose not to. One, because it would have been permanent. But more than that, it would have just looked like pink worms coming out of his body, and that's just not super appealing to me. I really wanted to sell the chaotic nature of Hellfire itself, so I chose to go the route of cursed cotton candy instead. Now, this video is long enough already, and believe me, Making cursed cotton candy is a process all on its own. So if you want to know more about how I did it, I decided to make that section its own separate video. Links in the description. Anyway, this project was a ton of fun to put together, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm pretty much out of things to say at this point, so let's roll those glamour shots and get on out of here. Thank you.
And that's another quest complete. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. If you have any thoughts or suggestions for things you'd like to see in the future, I'd love to hear about them. Don't be shy. I hope to see you all in Sunbreak. And as always, happy sculpting.